Philippians chapter 15, and we're going to take a look at verse number 10, reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. There you will find these words. The Apostle Paul writes, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. On tonight, I just want to speak from the subject, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. We've been studying grace for quite some time, and when we look at this word grace, we understand that the basic definition of the word grace is God's unmerited favor. We don't deserve it, we cannot earn it, but God gives it to us anyhow. When we look further at this word grace, we understand that grace is the redemptive plan of God in saving sinners and sustaining them in the right relationship with him. As we begin to look at this word grace and see some of the adjectives that are associated with this word, According to the Bible, grace is described as being great. According to Acts chapter 4, verse 33, grace is described as being surpassing. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14, and grace is described as being sufficient. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. The Bible makes it abundantly clear that without the grace of God in our lives, there would be no forgiveness of sins, there would be no consolation, and there would be no hope for each and every one of us. And we read about this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, as well as 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and the verse is 16. We need to also understand further that as children of the Almighty, it is possible for us to fall from grace if we seek to be justified by the law and we sever ourselves from Christ, according to Galatians chapter 5 and the verses 4. However, if we will simply walk upright and remain humble, then God's favor will never depart us. This was a promise that was given in the Old Testament in Psalm 84, verse 11, and this is also a promise that has been given to us in the New Testament when we take a look at James chapter 4, and the verse is 6. Now, in our scriptural text, the Apostle Paul is recorded as saying that it was the grace of God that made him what he was. And may I suggest to each and every one of us on tonight that we are more than what we have become, but it is through the grace of God that we are what we are presently. Nevertheless, it is this same grace that will also make us what we need to be as well. And so God's grace does many things for the child of God. God's grace does many things for many people. But on tonight, I only want to emphasize three things. And our first point is found in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. In Romans chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, the Bible reads, As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. And so our first point in regards to God's grace is this. God's grace found us. God's grace found us. The Bible tells us that sinful man does not seek after the things of God. Sinful man doesn't seek God. This is why Jesus said in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, that the Son of Man came to seek and to save those that are lost. Because the lost are not going to be looking for Jesus, therefore Jesus has to seek and look for the lost. And so I'm so thankful that even though sinful man does not seek after God, yet a holy God, our holy God, seeks after sinful man. I mean, look at the life of Moses. Moses was not looking for God. He was running from Pharaoh. But God found Moses and called out to him on a mountain from a burning bush. Look at the life of Matthew. Matthew, an apostle of Jesus Christ, he was not looking for Jesus. 
He was too busy working for the Roman Empire, possibly cheating his people out of their taxes. Yet Christ found Matthew and called out to him in a tax booth in town. And even the Apostle Paul, the one who wrote these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, he was not looking for God. He thought that he already was doing God's will when he was persecuting the church of Christ. Yet our Lord found Paul and called out to him on the road to Damascus. And so we, as children of the Most High God, we're no different. Hence comes the question, what were we doing? Or where were we at when God's grace found us? Were we truly looking for God, looking for his grace? Many of us were in denominational churches thinking that we already had the Lord. Many of us was out in the streets living La Vida Loca. When we were out here in the club on Saturday night, we weren't looking for Jesus. But aren't you glad that the grace of God found us, taught us, saved us, and now we are not lost? So not only did the grace of God find us, but point number two is this. God's grace saved us. It's not enough to find those that are lost, but God's grace goes a step further and saves those who are lost. Listen to your Bible as we take a look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. In Ephesians chapter 2, and the verses are 4 through 9, the apostle Paul writes, but God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. God's grace saved us. God's way of making us right with himself has been revealed in the scriptures. God makes us right through our faith in Christ Jesus. Faith is man's response to God. Grace is God's response to man. And God does this for everybody who believes in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us that everyone has sinned and is far away from God's saving presence. But by the free gift of God's grace, we have all been made right with him through Jesus Christ who sets us free. God offered Jesus so that by his blood, he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. And God did this in order to demonstrate that he himself is righteous. The Bible tells us as we go a little further in Romans chapter 3 verses 21 through 26 that God is not only just, but God is also the justifier to all them that believe in his son. So God's grace found us, God's grace saved us, and PowerPoint number 3 is found in Galatians chapter 1 verses 15 through 17. We're about to hear some more words from the Apostle Paul. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, the Bible reads, But when he who had set me apart before I was born and who called me by his grace was, re was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. So understand what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Paul is saying God's grace found me, God's grace saved me, and PowerPoint number three is this. God's grace fits and empowers us for our 
task. God's grace does more than just find us, but it goes a step further and saves us. And then it goes a step further and helps us to be able to do the work that God has called us to do as Christians. We have to recognize that being baptized is not the end of the battle. It's not the end of the journey. It's just the beginning because God's grace has saved us. And now that same grace is used to make us fit, useful and to empower us to do all that God will have us to do as children of his. See, unlike Paul, we may not know whether God wants us to be preachers or teachers or evangelists or elders, or deacons, or to be married to any of these people in his church. But I do know his grace has empowered us to be the Christians that he has called us to be. And so when I think about who I am as a result of God's grace, I'm always reminded by the words of Maya Angelou in her poem, A Christian. She says, when I say I am a Christian, I'm not shouting I'm clean living. I'm whispering I was lost. Now I'm found and forgiven. When I say I'm a Christian, I don't speak of this with pride. I'm confessing that I stumble and need Christ to be my guide. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and need his strength to carry on. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting I have failed and need God to clean my mess. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but God believes that I am worth it. When I say I'm a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my shares of heartaches, so I call upon his name. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not holier than thou. I'm just a simple sinner who received God's good grace somehow. So let us continue to do what the Apostle Peter tells us to do in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, in which we are exhorted and admonished to grow in the grace of and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where do you stand on tonight? We are what we are by the grace of God. And don't you know that if you're not a Christian on tonight, God's grace has already found you, directed you, and guided you here. The question you need to ask yourself on tonight is this. Am I going to allow that same grace to save my soul? Are you ready to receive the salvation that Jesus died on the cross for you to be a beneficiary of? You've heard God's word according to John chapter 6, verse 45. It is written in the prophets, and they all shall be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that have heard and have learned of the Father, Jesus says, come unto me. Do you believe what you've heard? Do you believe that Jesus is who he says he is? Do you believe that God loves you? The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Are you ready to give up sin? Are you ready to renounce all ungodliness and worldly lust? Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Jesus came with grace and truth. Are we ready to confess him to be the son of the living God on tonight? According to Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, where Jesus says, whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my father, which is in heaven. Are you ready to have your sins washed away in that watery grave of baptism? Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be condemned. Are you ready for God's grace to save you? It's already found you. Are you ready to save, for it to save you? Because if you go down in the waters of baptism, you will raise to the newness of life as the Bible tells us according to Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. 
and God will forgive you of your sins, Acts 2.38. He'll make you a new creature in Christ Jesus, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. What kind of creature? A creature who now has been saved by the grace of God, and that saved grace now empowers you and makes you useful for the task to be the very best Christian that you can possibly be. And God will add you. You don't have to join. You don't have to find because God stands ready to add you to his church. The only church that you can read about in scripture. And that church is the church of Christ. Isaiah prophesied that God was going to build this church in Isaiah chapter 2 verses 2 through 4. Jesus said he was going to build that church. He promised to do it in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. He fulfilled his own promise and built that church in Acts chapter 2. Purchased that church with his very own blood, according to Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Adds the save to that church, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Are you ready to become a member of a going church for a coming Lord, which does all that God authorizes? Well, maybe you're a Christian already. Maybe you've already obeyed the gospel. Maybe you're already a member of the church. But have you been living according to the thing? that grace teaches us. The Bible tells us some things in Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, that if we're truly saved by grace, then we are called upon to live a life of gratitude, meaning that we live a life thanking God and living for him, not our way, but his way, because he gave us a gift that paid a penalty that we could not pay on our own effort, nor by our own merit. Jesus paid it all, and he gave us a gift that we didn't deserve. And that's the reason why we're able to worship. That's the reason why we're able to offer up praise. That's the reason why we are able to call upon his name. But have we been living according to that grace? If not, then this is our opportunity to say, Lord, I'm sorry. God, I've sinned against you. I admit that I've done wrong. And we need to do what the prodigal son did. Come to ourselves. Come back home. And make things right with the Father tonight before it's eternally and everlasting too late. Wherever you are on tonight, make a wise-hearted decision.